we going supercar fans back again to another episode for you guys and uh, it's kind of a sad one today uh, if you guys haven't already known with um, all the headlines and stuff with supercars.com speed cafe all those guys and um, now on here uh, and the headline would obviously give it away that um, GRM Gary Rogers Motorsport has officially left uh, supercars they will be obviously racing until the end of the year but um, you won't see them on the grid next year uh, which is sad um, I just posted up a thing up on Facebook um, and yeah it, it's it's really really sad to see Gary um, leave uh, it's you know a lot of great talent has come out of there um, I'll just roll some names off uh, Stephen Richards um, Jason Bright Lee Holdsworth Michael Caruso Jamie Winkup Scott McLaughlin Garth Tander Jason Baguana you know there's so many names I'm missing out but um, all of them have you know been a champion in their own eyes and they've all come from GRM at one stage, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really sad to uh, to see them leave. Um, as you guys know, I was a Lee Holdsworth fan. Oh, I am a Lee Holdsworth fan for this will be my fifteenth year, and um, I was on the GRM bandwagon for a bit. I think everyone at one stage has or had. A driver come from GRM. Okay, if you're if you're a Red Bull fan, then Jamie Winkup. You know, if if you're a if you're a Shell Helix fan, then a uh, Shell V Power fan, then you'd come from Scott McLaughlin. And you know, there's been so many guys. You know, Jason Baguana, Garth Tander. You know, you, you name them, they've been there. And um, really, really sad to see him go. So hopefully, um, but uh, you. you it won't be the last of them. Uh, they'll still have their doors open. They're running the S5000 um, program, as long as the TCR, they're running that. So they're still gonna have work. Um, it's just a matter of um, Richie Stanaway and James Golding. I feel sorry for them two boys. Um, you know, when Boost signed last year for a three year deal, um, James Golding and Richie Stanaway obviously signed in for those three years and uh, now it's going to be hard to um, actually just then Michael Caruso posted up a thing on Instagram um, actually I've been seeing a lot of them popping up lately uh, James Golding just did one before Richie Stanaway did one earlier Garth Tander did one last night um, so it must have been it probably it was probably said last night but it didn't get out into the news until today. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's... It's really sad. Really, really sad to see. Um, but I hope that uh, they'll push on. And hopefully one day we might see them back into the main game. Um, which would be good. Be good for the sport. Um be good for our category, be good for young drivers uh, wanting to have a go. Um, but yeah, but with the whole um, James Golding and Richie Stanaway situation, now that, you know, there's still eight or so drivers, I think, for next year that haven't signed yet. Uh, two of them, including them now. Um, we have uh, Gary Jacobson and Simona De Silvestre that are off contract for Rick Kelly Racing, oh, Kelly Motorsport, whatever it is. Um, with that, uh, Rick Kelly announced that he's going to Mustang next year and only driving, um, only having a two car garage now instead of four, so there's going to be a few off there. Lee Holsworth still needs to drive for next year. Um, Chas Mostert's been linked to 
Walkinshaw and Andretti with um, James Courtney going to Techno, which they are now being based in Penrith or Sydney for next year. And they're taking Boost Mobile with them. So that's uh, one of the reasons why Gary won't be re-signing with uh, Boost, unfortunately. Um, there's a few others as well. Todd Hazelwood hasn't got a drive for next year. So many, so many drivers that haven't got drives for next year, and it's just going to be hard now because what we had 20, 26 cars on the grid for this year's Bathurst, including two wild cards. So twenty four for a normal, um, normal event basically. And now that we're losing Gary Rogers and two uh, Nissans, then we'll be twenty cars on the grid for next year. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be, going to be tough, it's going to be really tough for next year, so hopefully your driver will be in the category for next year, um, but yeah, we'll see what happens, eh, we'll see what happens, see if someone can, um, get a car up and going before next year, um, as well as that, Team 18, as well, Charlie Schwerkop, he's gone to a two-car fit. So that's 21 cars on the grid, uh, which is good. So there's another car that we can enjoy. But other than that, yeah, it's it's a very sad day in motorsport. Um, very, very sad day in Australian motorsport. And um, Gary will be certainly missed. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens next year. Guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for all tuning in. Bathurst recap will be coming up later this afternoon. Um, but uh, the Seven Day Venice video um, obviously got cancelled this year because of um, our campsite. If you guys didn't <laughs> watch it, uh, our campsite blew away. I'll post up a photo here of it. And, um, yeah, we, me and Dad decided to, um, what, what happened was when, when that happened, uh, we are basically ready to go home, and this was on the Tuesday, so we are there Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, so we are there for four days, and then we had 95 kilometer hour gusts of wind, it just took our gazebo straight over our camper van, completely destroyed our gazebo. Um, didn't completely destroy our camper van, but it, um, it bent a few support bowls that were holding the, holding the trailer up. And, um, so we decided to, um, on the Tuesday, we were like, yeah, let's, I just don't want to be here now. It's just horrible. And then on Wednesday, I slept in the car, that's how bad it was. <laughs> um... On the Wednesday, I said to Dad, look, let's just go home. We'll take the camper trailer with us. And we'll keep the gazebo, because we kept the gazebo, the barbecue, the fridge, and all that up there. And we're so thankful that our neighbors, um, Steve, Skeet, Tracy, and all that, we couldn't thank you guys enough for looking after our stuff. Uh, we left it up at the track, uh, left it up at our campsite. On the Wednesday, we head off. Uh, Wednesday morning, uh, we got back to Newcastle late Wednesday afternoon, we packed the trailer, another trailer, um, then we slept nicely on Wednesday night and left about 2.30 Thursday morning to head back up the track, got up there, set up again. I missed the whole of Thursday, I only watched like an hour's worth of practice or whatever. Like throughout the whole day, it was crazy. Um, then on Friday, we went down to, uh, to Bathurst to do some shopping. And uh, you guys don't know this, um, but the gazebo and the camper trailer wasn't the only thing that we lost. <laughs> uh, my car broke down while I was up there. Uh, security this year was horrible. Uh, it was good on the Saturday when we arrived, but um, on the on the Friday, 
when all the police and all that were there, the security were like really, really, really strict on everything. Which is weird because on Sunday, oh, sorry, on Saturday when we got there, they were all like, oh yeah, we'll just check whatever else, blah, 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 and they just let us through. And on Friday, they were just so like strict on shit and it was crazy. And I was sitting in the line to get back up the top of the mountain for about an hour and my car overheated while I was sitting there stationary. Uh, and mind you, it wasn't a cold day, it was quite warm. And I uh, got up on top of the mountain, just, my engine, and my temperature gauge was just going through the roof. We got out of the car and I'm hearing this sizzly sound, sound like a barbecue. And I opened the hood and my coolant hoses, um, they were all split so there was just coolant pissing out of these hoses and it was just, oh god, here we go. So, we left it, we got the part on Saturday. Uh, we fixed the car, it's all good now, it's running well. And then Dad went down to Bathurst on Saturday morning. After he fixed the car, he's like, I'm gonna go do some shopping. And I was like, yeah, no worries. And I was just about to walk back to the track and I got a phone call from Dad. I said, what's up? And he goes, you're gonna have to come get me. And I thought he was joking. I was like, oh yeah, right, right what have what you done? He goes, no, nah, the car's, the car's broken. So what do you mean the car's broken? He's like, no, 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 the car's not broken. I was like, oh, good, because we just bloody fixed it. He said, no, I just, um, so where Mount Panorama is, guys, um, like I said, it's all public road and whatever else. You go out of the main road, and then there's Charleston University and whatever else up top. You go through there, and then there's a turn off to Cowra. Um, Dad was parked there. And I said, what are you doing up there? And he goes, well, I've just been pulled over by the booze bus. Oh, God, you're over the limit, aren't you? He goes, no, 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 I'm not over the limit. I said, oh, what's going on? So he said to me, he goes, oh, I didn't realise that when I, um, when I re-registered the trailer, the camper van, uh, I forgot to renew my licence. And I was like, oh my God, no, you're kidding. His license expired in September. I don't know when, but it expired in September. So, uh, dad had been driving around to work in Sydney from Newcastle to Sydney, not every day, but he'd stay in Sydney. He'd drive from Newcastle to Sydney, stay in Sydney and then drive home every weekend. Didn't realize that he, his license expired. So I was like, all right, and so it looks like I'm gonna have to come get you, eh? He's like, yeah, yeah. So I, I walked from McPhillamy Park to Reed Park, which is probably the longest 700 meters you'll ever walk. It is crazy long. Got on a bus, went down to the bottom of the mountain in the paddock, walked out of the gate, and then walked all the way up to the Cowra Turnoff. <sighs> It took me probably about half an hour to 45 minutes to do that. It was crazy walk. It was insane. Finally got in the car. We went shopping, blah, blah, blah. Went back up to the, went back up top. Everything was sweet. And then um, we went to... Got through to Saturday. Saturday was good. And then Sunday, obviously, was a race. Um... Uh, and the Sunday race was just insane. First lap, Tim Slade. Might as well do the recap while I'm here, screw up. So Tim Slade, <laughs> this title is going to be huge. So Tim Slade uh, went off in uh, turn uh, up past the cutting on lap one, and brought the safety car out. A hundred laps later, so it was quite boring for a bit. Hundred laps later, Todd Hazelwood went off at Reed Park. Uh, that brought another safety car out. Um. Then, who else went off then? Then it was the Chaz Mostert and Cam Waters accident. That was pretty bad. <laughs> I would like to be a fly on the wall for that debriefing. That would have been interesting. Um, and that brought another safety car out. And then Lee Holsworth resumed in first, which I was so happy about because I'm like, oh, yeah, baby. 
like 50 something laps left and I'm stoked, eh? I'm freaking great. Then um, Andre Heimgardner went off at, um, at the S's. Sorry, Forest Elbow. And I brought another safety car out. And all the strategies just went out the window. Um, mind you, Scott McLaughlin and Jamie Winkup were due to pit that lap, which they did. And then the whole thing with Fabian Coulthard holding up the field. I'm going to leave you guys, I'm going to leave the comments open on this one. What do you think Fabian and TJR, DJR Team Penske should get? Um, as a penalty wise, Fabian already had a, a PLP, pit lane penalty. He had a 15 second time penalty in the pit lane. Um, my, I'll get back to that in a minute actually. And then lastly, four laps to go. The, um, the wildcard entries of uh, the two American boys went off at the sand trap of, at Murray's. Um, oh, sorry, no, that is when it happened. And then on Andre uh, did it with four laps to go, and they were trying to uh, get the car off the track. And um, with one lap to go, it was crazy. We're all thinking, oh god, there's no way that this race can end on the safety car, which it didn't, thank god. Safety car game back in, one lap dash. Scott McLaughlin, your Bathurst 1000 champion. Uh, it was a great, great moment. It was really, really good. But um, yeah, back to the Fabian accident. Um, not accident, incident. My my thing about it is now, team orders are a big thing um, in motorsport, uh, especially in Formula 1s. You know, we've all heard the stories of the Singapore accident um, with Fernando Alonso's teammate at the time purposely crashing into the wall to give Fernando uh, the race win. Uh, we've had a lot more accidents, but that's the most vivid one. Uh, team orders in supercars isn't really a thing. Uh, we haven't really heard much about team orders. The only thing that we really heard about last year was um, Jamie Winkup slowing down at Bukakawi to let Shane Van Gisbergen keep going for the title. Uh, that was a big thing. Uh, very controversial, obviously, but, um, you know, you get that. But the whole thing about this is that what, what should happen, right? And I, I mentioned, I, I came to the realisation the other day that Whatever happens, Scott McLaughlin should not get the win taken off him. Reason being is that he had the fastest car all day, he was leading the race, and he was doing on his own strategy. Plus, mind you, he had no idea that Fabian held up the, the field. It wasn't like a radio transmission came into Scott and said, oh, by, mind you, you're going to pit this lap, but Fabian's going to hold up the field at Connor Strait, so you can get out in front of everyone. That's not what happened. Okay? Fabian got told to slow down because of... They didn't know where the crash was, which was weird because it was all over the big screens. They were saying that there was debris on the track, which there wasn't. They had uh, engine failure, which wasn't true at all. It was quite weird, actually. And then Fabian holds the field up by like 47 seconds. It, it was more or less of the fact that if Fabian... I understand the whole fact that if Fabian held, didn't hold him up, then it would have been a hell of a lot closer from people behind him overtaking McLaughlin and Wink up in the pit lane. Uh, and that would have given James Golding, Lee Holsworth, James Courtney, Shane Van Gisberg, and a couple others a really big advantage. It would have put them miles in front. Um, I was listening to the uh, Loud Pedal podcast last night, and they said that Lee, Hol uh, Lee, who was on there, said that if he didn't get held up, he probably would have regained in like third or second or even first, maybe. Um, 
So I, I reckon that whatever happens, Scott should not be stripped of the of the win. I think the only thing that they should do is deduct all of Team Penske's points for that round. And that should be it. Fabian already did his penalty. And maybe a fine, maybe, I don't know. Uh, Fabian already did his penalty. Scott was miles in front anyway. And who knows, if it was... If it was the other way around, and Fabian was leading the race, same thing would have happened, but... It wouldn't be this controversial, I guess. Um, but... The whole thing is that with with everyone on social media and just the media in general, um, they've completely blown this out of proportion. It is so unnecessary. Um, and poor Fabs having to live with death threats and shit like this, it's, it's just not on. And I've already done a video this year about Rick Kelly and Chaz Mosser. Everyone knows what happened in Adelaide. Um, it's just not, it's just not right. You know, so-called fans, death threats, whatever else, you know, these drivers have got enough shit on their plate as it is and to have people do it, like, this is the most exciting racing in the world. And yeah, we'll admit, it has been a little boring lately with McLaughlin winning everything. But fact of the matter is, is that we're fans of the sport you know, and we support everybody. That's the, that's the glory about supercars, is that we support everyone, no matter how good or how bad or how much of a hero or villain you are, we support everybody. And um, for Fabs to be going through this, you know, I just couldn't imagine, poor bastard, he, he must be, you know, staying in his house all day and just, sitting around just watching social media and getting messages after messages of messages of just bullshit going on so it's not on but realistically I think the only thing that they should do is they shouldn't strip McLaughlin of his win and they should just say look what we'll do we'll take off your points for this round and that's it you know that that's that's it the only thing different about that incident and the one that uh, Wink Up and Van Gisbergen did last year was Wink Up didn't hold anyone up. It was still under racing conditions. He slowed right down to have an advantage uh, to have to give Shane an advantage in championship. That's not that much, but this was a little much. But everyone's making it such a big deal that it shouldn't be as bad as what it sounds, if that makes sense. So, I, I'm on Fab's side for this. You know, it, it shouldn't, he already served, like I said, he already served his penalty, doesn't need to do it again, doesn't need to get fined, doesn't need to do anything. But the whole thing is that Team Penske did something quite illegal. In my eyes, it's illegal, my opinion, it's illegal. Um, so they should just deduct the points from the round, which is still alright because they're what, like 300 points or something in front of Red Bull anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and they've already won the Constructors title anyway, so it's not going to make a difference. But that should be the only thing that it is. And Fabs should just be able to rock up to the Gold Coast and just live a normal life after that. So. That's my rant over. <laughs> Guys, if you have any comments at all about anything I just mentioned, please don't hesitate, leave your comments down. I'd love to hear your suggestions about what they should do with this penalty. Give your support for Gary Rogers and um, show your love for me. I had a fucking shit week up at Bathurst, so make sure you show some love for me. <laughs> <laughs> like the video guys, dislike it if you want, comment down, like I said, comment down on anything that you just heard just then and have your say or opinion on it. Subscribe if you're new and guys, I shall see you next week for the Gold Coast 600 up there. Powerboats are on this weekend, so uh, it should be good in the Lake Macquarie area, which is where I am now. 
which is good. So we'll be able to hear him from the house, but um, we're going down there. Dad's birthday's on Sunday as well, so that's going to be good. Happy 55th birthday, I think it is. Pretty sure. 55? No. Is it? Something like that. I can't remember. I turned 27 two, two Tuesdays ago. So happy birthday for me. Not last Tuesday, the Tuesday before, so the 1st of October, you guys know that. <laughs> last year for the Bathurst 7 day Venice thing, I bragged all day about it. It's my birthday, it's my birthday. <laughs> but guys, yeah, do all that good stuff. Leave a like down, dislike it if you want. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to read and I'll reply as quick as I can. Subscribe if you're new and guys, I shall see you all next week for Gold Coast 600.